IVF and genetic testing. Now everyone knows that the success rate in IVF is not 100% and we also know that the commonest reason an embryo doesn't implant is because there's a genetic defect in the embryo. So isn't it common sense that fine doctor, you're making these embryos in the IVF lab, you're looking at them, why don't you just test these embryos and then put only the genetically normal embryos inside so that if you exclude the genetically abnormal embryos, my pregnancy rates will go up. Sounds logical, but trust me, it's not simple at all. And in fact, it's misleading. The good news is we have the technology to check the embryo by doing what is called PGD or pre-implantation genetic testing. But the name is misleading because all we can test is the number of chromosomes in the embryo. We can do aneuploidy screening, screening or chromosomal testing, but we can't test for 30,000 genes. That's just physically impossible. We don't have the technology because remember when we do an embryo biopsy, we're removing just two or three cells from a 100 cell embryo. So obviously all these technologies are major limitations. And the big problem is patients have very unrealistic expectations. And the reality is that the miscarriage rate, even after transferring a PGD normal embryo, is actually as high as it would be even if you hadn't done PGD at all in the first place. Because the PGD normal embryo will be euploid, will have a normal number of chromosomes. But that doesn't mean that the other genes are all normal. And a lot of them will have lethal genetic defects that in spite of having spent all that money, you may still end up with a miscarriage. You may still end up with an IVF failure. So be very careful and don't throw your money away on doing useless genetic tests or PGD because they will not improve your success rates.